All right, welcome my Z stars to another great video for AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to tackle the topic of what does 95% confident really mean? In the long run, finding a confidence interval for a proportion or for a mean is actually really easy. It's pretty much formula based, but a lot of kids never really understand what 95% confident means. So as I start this video, notice it's not a probability. It's not about chance. It's not about time. It's all about samples. So let's take our time to remind ourselves what last unit was on when we talked about sampling distributions. Remember, sampling distributions show us where samples fall, whether they be p hats, sample proportions, or x bars, sample means. Sampling distributions represent all possible sample means or all possible sample proportions for a given sample size. And when we build that model, as long as we follow our conditions, we know that 95% of samples are very likely, right? And we know that that's between negative 1.96 standard deviations and positive 1.96 standard deviations. Now, you might have been taught negative 2 and positive 2, but if you really want to get technical, uh, the actual Z star, the, the critical Z value for 95% confidence is 1.96. So again, th this model tells us that we know in our hearts that 95% of samples are very likely. 95% of samples are totally normal. Now, 5% of samples are significant, right? That would be our alpha level. 5% of samples are kind of weird, and that gets split up evenly because of symmetry. 2.5% are kind of high, and 2.5% are kind of low. But let's not be pessimistic here. Let's be optimistic. We know that 95% of samples are totally normal, totally likely within that range. Now, when we create a sampling distribution, we're thinking deductively, meaning we know the truth and we build a model surrounding that truth. So let's say that 23% of Americans watch their bread while they toast it. Okay, so if we know for a fact that 23% of Americans, you know, watch their bread while they toast it, well, that means that if we start looking at samples, if we start looking at p-hats, you know, if we look at a bunch of p-hats, some samples are going to be a little bit higher than 23%, some samples will be a little bit lower, but the mean of all those p-hats it should be 23%. Now, what's really cool here is I haven't taken a look at a single sample, but if I know the fact that 23% of Americans watch their bread while they toast it, well, then I would expect the mean of all potential samples of size 60 to be 23%. But again, I also have knowledge that things deviate. Like I just got done saying, some, some samples could be a little lower, some samples could be a little bit higher, and that's why we calculate the standard deviation of our sampling distribution. Very simple formula, the square root of our P, 0.23, times the opposite of that, 0.77, divided by our sample size 60, giant square root, 0.0543. Now that allows us to go up one, two, three standard deviations, down one, down two, down three standard deviations, so that we could see, hey, what's typical? So you know what's really typical? Somewhere around 17 to 28%. That's really typical. And then again, 12 to about 34, that's also pretty typical. Now, if we really wanted to find it, it would be right here at negative 1.96 to positive 1.96. But that's where 95% of samples fall. So, you know, if I think of this inductively, meaning I don't know the truth. So let's just say that, you know, we covered up the truth. We're, we're blinded to the truth. We don't know what the truth is. But we would assume if we do collect one sample, we would only assume that that one sample is very close to the truth. Now, we don't know what the truth is, right? Because we're thinking inductively. We don't know the truth. But if our sample was a little bit above it, well, as long as it's in that middle 95%, when we wrap an interval around our sample, we will capture the truth within it. Or maybe another sample comes back down here. Well, once again, if we wrap an interval around our sample, we will capture the truth within our sample. So this 95% confident idea comes from the fact that we know when you have a sampling distribution built on the truth. We know that 95% of samples are close to the truth. So now if we're blinded to that truth, we're trying to find that truth, we think reverse. We think, okay, I have a sample. I only have one sample. It's just a sample, but I bet it's close to the truth. In fact, I bet it's so close to the truth that if I create an interval around it, I will capture the truth. Now, here's another example with means because the same concept holds true for means. 
Now, let's just say that the average IQ score of all American students is 100, right? The average IQ score is 100. That's pretty typically known, right? And the standard deviation is 15. All right. Now, what about samples of size 35? Well, what about the sample mean? What about the mean of a sample? Well, a sampling distribution shows you all possible sample means, right? Tons of them. Some are going to be higher, some are going to be lower, but the mean of all those means, well, should be 100. And again, I'm thinking deductive here because I haven't even taken a look at a single sample and I already know what a whole bunch of samples are potentially going to look like. But again, I understand that some samples are going to vary. So if I take the 15 divided by the square root of 35, I get 2.54. That means that, you know, typically samples could be a little bit higher. One, two, three standard deviations above, negative one, negative two, negative three standard deviations below. So that's what I did. I went up, 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 down, down, down. Now, the idea is the same. I know that 95% of samples are between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 standard deviations. So if I think deductively, like I, you know, cover up the truth, pretend I don't know what it is, and I just grab a sample. Well, if I just grab a sample, like for example, a sample right here, if I wrap an interval around that sample, I should capture the truth. And again, it all comes back to this idea that I know if I did have the sampling distribution, then I know the truth is in the center, and I know that 95% of samples are really, really close to it. But if I think deductively where I, I, I don't know the center, all I know is my sample, then again, even if my sample would fall down here, I would only assume that if I wrap this interval around it, I will catch the truth in that interval. So that's where this idea comes from. So here's a couple different ways you could talk about what 95% confident means. We know that 95% of samples are very close to the true parameter, whether that be a mean or a proportion. In fact, 95% of samples are so close that if an interval is wrapped around any one of these samples, the true parameter will be in it. Another way you could look at this is if many samples are collected, then each would create its own interval. And 95% of those intervals will contain the population parameter, again, whether that be a mean or a proportion. And a third way of kind of looking at this is saying, hey, if in fact the truth was outside of our interval, it would only mean that our sample statistics would have been very, very rare to have occurred. Now, that's kind of hard for some kids to explain, so let me say this, right? This is our sampling distribution that we built for, um, whoops, sorry about that. This is our sampling distribution that we built for IQs. Well, again, the idea is that if, if my sample was down here, let me get a better color that shows up. If my sample was down here, if I did get one of these extremely unlikely samples, when I build my interval around it, notice, oh no, I didn't get the mean. So what we're trying to say is if you, if the truth really is outside of your interval, then your sample mean would have been a very, very unlikely sample to begin with. But this is where we think as statisticians, as statisticians, excuse me, we don't believe in rare things happening. We don't believe in the likelihood of rare things. So the only way the truth is outside of our interval is if our sample was very unlikely. But remember, we don't believe in those unlikely things. That's why we're so darn confident that the truth is in fact in our sample. So I know that this question comes up a lot on the AP test. What does 95% confident mean? Just please make sure you do not reference probability. You do not reference chance. You don't talk about it being a percentage of time. It's all about samples. It's all about this idea of, yeah, I only have one sample, but let's pretend that we could think about all samples. And that is where we think about 95% of samples are so close to the mean that if you wrap an interval around them, the mean will fall inside of it. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. See you at the next video.